They lied about cholesterol to sell you statins. They lied about healthy fats in food to sell you processed deadly trans fats. Uh, they lied about the COVID vaccine. They lied about a chemical imbalance to sell you antidepressants. So you follow the money. Almost 5% of kids, three to 17, are being diagnosed with clinical depression. In a 10 minute wellness checkup, you can get a life altering drug for your child, but you're likely not asked about screen time as a, as a parent. You're not asked about what you're feeding your family. Instead, these parents are offered Lexapro for kids as young as seven. The deck is really stacked in favor of Big Pharma and the American public really saw it during COVID when, as you remember, there are so many natural solutions being offered by medical professionals in private that if you went to make that public, people lost their licenses, they were prosecuted. It was, uh, it was crazy. You're listening to a special edition of The Sean Spicer Show, brought to you by GDR Labs. All right, guys. I had a show, um, I don't know, a few weeks back, a couple months back uh, with Alex Clark, and the response was phenomenal. I wanted to bring her back to discuss what's going on with respect to our government and big pharma, what we are allowed to eat, how we get our drugs. It is unbelievably fascinating to me. The remedies that are out there and the things that we get fed that the government isn't telling us about or giving us access to. Right. I mean, think about this. I see this stuff all the time. I'm like, how did I not know about this? Why did the government prevent this from it? Why isn't HHS or CDC or the FDA doing anything to promote alternatives? We saw this through the whole COVID crisis. Things that should have been pretty easy, taking more vitamin C or whatever. No one wanted to talk about that. These alternative remedies, we can't talk about that. It was unbelievable. And so I wanted to kind of bring Alex back and get into these discussions because the more I find out about this, the more I become intrigued about what's really out there and what big pharma and our government are preventing us from happening, uh, from finding out. And so I wanted to talk about this. I find out so much stuff from listening to some of these other podcasts like Alex Clark. She came on, I don't know, like I said, a few weeks, a month ago. Uh, I was learned a lot and I wanted to kind of continue that discussion. But I want to talk to you because like, I, I've, if you've heard me talk about this before, I've got hip issues, knee issues. I've got my shoulder from a surgery that I had 30 years ago. I've been in PT more than I care to talk about. I get it. I've had pain and suffering in all these different areas. I've gone in and gotten shots. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about if you suffer from anything. And what normally happens? You go in and the first thing they say is, we're going to give you a pill. And I, I got to be honest with you, I don't always feel comfortable with that for a variety of reasons. I don't like how it makes me feel otherwise or mentally or the, or the side effects that it gives me. Right. I don't know. Maybe you don't. I, I, I find that to be a challenge. Um, and then I stumbled across this thing, canolidine. And for my knee, I started rubbing the bomb on my knee. Unbelievable. Pain gone in a day. And then they've got these natural drops that come with it, uh, with the order that I got anyway. You can get it as well. And it starts to change everything in terms of the pain and the wellness. No side effects. It is unbelievable. All natural. And all of this stuff is here in the United States. It's manufactured here in the United States, not coming from overseas or from China or anywhere that we have to worry about. And I, I learned about these things and I said, why do we not know more about them? So I, I just got to tell you, the really cool thing is that viewers today can access the only canoladine product in the world for less than a dollar a day right now as a special for the show. You can try it risk-free for 90 days. You have nothing to lose. It's, there's no money to be lose. You will feel a lot better. I can tell you that from personal experience. Uh, your days of getting away from this chronic pain, I'm telling you, it was like a game changer for me. Go to trykono.com slash Sean. Trykono.com slash Sean. You're going to hear from the founder of it in just a minute, but it is an unbelievable, natural, made in America solution for your pain. And I, I'm telling you, you will never, never regret trying this. And if you didn't like it for any reason, the best part is you got that money back guarantee. Try Kono.com slash Sean. All right. First and foremost, I want to bring in Alex Clark. You've seen her before. She is the host of Poplitics and more importantly, the Spillover Pop, Pop, podcast where she talks to experts about health issues. Um, it is unbelievable. No subject has been off limits when it comes to Alex and her podcast. She is talk to leading experts and doctors about what's happening. I want to bring her in right now. 
Alex, welcome back to the show. The last time we did this, A, the the reception was fantastic. And I kept getting more and more comments. I kept going down more and more rabbit holes. And I wanted to kind of get back into this again. Uh, you know, it's funny. I My wife thinks my entirety of my medical and health and wellness if information now comes from Instagram. And I joke with her. I'm like, yeah, probably it does. But that's because nobody will tell me. The government hides information from us. Big Farmer doesn't want us to know about it. I, so when what, what what I want to start with is like, when did this all start? We, we thought that the government was doing food pyramids and keeping us healthy. And the more I find out, all this was a big farce. Yeah, so I think it's important to start with understanding how we got to this, I call it like a pill for an ill culture in the first place, right? So I think we need a short history lesson on the medical industrialization complex. So in the early <laughs> 1900s, John Rockefeller saw this huge money-making opportunity in the American medical industry. And he set out on an absolutely ruthless mission to put a stop on all natural medicine. So at the time in American culture, herbal and natural medicine were extremely popular. In fact, half of American doctors and med schools were teaching and using primarily holistic medicine. Uh, they were talking about things like a proper diet, at-home remedies, tinctures. That was the default method for dealing with most ailments. And it, it, it wasn't the outlier, which is what we see today. So John Rockefeller hires this man named Abraham Flexner to submit what we now call the Flexner Report to Congress in 1910. And this report concluded that there were too many doctors and med schools in America, that all of these other healing methods, which of course had existed for hundreds or thousands of years, suddenly were unscientific. Rockefeller wanted a way to make money with the byproducts of his oil refinement because we know that he was in the oil industry. And so his solution of what to do with all of this extra stuff he had created was to integrate it into the pharmaceutical industry, what we now know as the pharmaceutical industry. And with Abraham Flexner creating this report for Rockefeller, he was like, you know, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to give you a spot for life on my board with the Rockefeller Foundation, et cetera. This was their diabolical plan. And unfortunately, Congress ate it up. They asked no questions. And so that led to the pill for an ill or monetization of medicine that is the standard of care today. So at the time, everybody practicing natural medicine or looking to get to the root cause of disease were basically left out of town. It was quackery. And so the indoctrination then was really just beginning. And we're still battling over overcoming the stigma with naturopathic doctors with homeopathy today and so so in med schools today do they 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 what how how is that affected what what doctors get taught today what you're seeing is um maybe a couple weeks if spent on nutrition and almost the entirety of somebody's med school experience being spent on pharmaceutical drugs. So, 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 so what that means in layman's terms is, hey, when somebody's ill, doctor, your answer is, here's the drug you give them. This here, we're not going to talk to you about how to solve the problem they have. We're just going to tell you about the pill you can give them. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. So so John Rockefeller gave over $100 million to hospitals and med schools to help make this transition easier, meaning transitioning out of natural medicine, that there are natural ways you can, you can heal yourself with food, with natural herm herbal remedies from the earth, transition them out of that, uh, and instead asking them to create this similar chemical reaction using his oil byproducts that he could patent, mass produce, and sell in a pill form. I mean, it just, it explains so much now because whenever I go to the doctor for any ailment, pain, uh, you name it, whatever it is, they'll say, okay, you know, if you have trouble sleeping, it's, well, we'll give you Ambien or one of those other drugs. If you have a pain issue, it's here's the opioid that we can give you. The default isn't how do we solve the the pain problem, the the reason you're not sleeping, why you have a weight issue, it's here's the pill we'll give you. Yeah, exactly right. And and how long are your doctor's visits, uh, Sean? When you when you go to the doctor like that for your checkup, how long would you say on average those checkups last? Ten minutes. Yeah, and I would say that by 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 minute two, they've got the pad out, and they're like, "So for this, we're going to give you this. For this, we're going to give you that." Right. So you're you're what we've got here. 
you have big pharma making the problem worse. Speaking of these 10-minute wellness checkups, let's talk about depression. There is no scientific evidence to support the claim that chemical imbalances in the brain are the cause of depression, right? Uh, maybe somebody watching this is shocked hearing that. Uh, yet pharmaceutical companies will sell you antidepressants where there is abundant evidence that these drugs actually lead to more depression and increased rate of suicidal ideation. If you say something enough, this is, this is the entire pharma marketing scheme. If you say something enough times like, oh, there's a chemical imbalance in the brain, that's what causes depression, people will just start believing it as fact, even though right. that doesn't exist. And so when people take the drug, when people take the drug, they are feeling worse, they're gaslighted, they're told that they will feel worse without it, and then they are given another drug. So that's how they're increasing these profit margins. You can say, uh, I, I think they're, okay, somebody who's spoken out a lot about this is Tom Cruise, which you can say a lot about Tom Cruise, okay, I definitely don't agree with him on a lot of things, but <laughs> he has been somebody, uh, one of the only people really in Hollywood who has been talking about this propaganda with antidepressants, for example, for a very long time. Um, they lied about cholesterol to sell you statins. They lied about healthy fats in food to sell you processed deadly trans fats. Uh, they lied about the COVID vaccine. They lied about a chemical imbalance to sell you antidepressants. So you follow the money, okay? And um, I know that a lot of people have concerns about kids, okay? So how, what about the targeting of children in particular from pharma? We are seeing nearly 10% of children ages 3 to 17 being diagnosed with anxiety. This is according to the CDC. Right. Almost 5% of kids 3 to 17 are being diagnosed with clinical depression. In a 10-minute wellness checkup, which you agreed, that's about how long these appointments are, you can get a life-altering drug for your child, but you're likely not asked about screen time as a, as a parent. You're not asked about what you're feeding your family, even though, uh, you know, iPad time, that's known to increase anxiety. What your children's eating, which typically is a diet full of, of uh, food dyes, artificial food dyes, which we know increases anxiety. Uh, you're not asked about any of that. Um, and that's important because there's a distinct gut-brain connection when, when it comes to eating food dyes that also leads to worsened anxiety. Instead, these parents are offered Lexapro for kids as young as seven. So just think about that for a second, right? I mean, I just, as you said it, I'm thinking to myself, you go in to see a doctor. Here's the kids my problem having. I, I, I've been reading that book by Jonathan Haidt. Um, I, I obviously read the first one, The Coddling of the American Mind, about how social media and screen time has affected kids, right? That's an obvious answer. Hey, maybe you should take the screen away from the kid a little bit more. Instead, it's here's the drug that will give you. Right. Yeah. And I think what's also interesting is uh, people don't realize that these artificial food colorings are actually banned in several other countries. Uh, these are well, ingredients. And that's, you, I, I joked about the the Instagram account, right? You know, these red dyes and whatever. I see that on Instagram all the time that they're banned in all these other countries. And yet, wh where's our government, Alex? Where I don't understand that. I joked for a while. I'm like, this can't be true because well, how would the CDC or the NIH or the FDA allow this? So we know that these food dyes worsen symptoms uh, in autistic children. We know that other countries like Canada, Norway, Austria, the UK, they've already banned them. Kellogg's actually is a company that makes different cereals without food dyes for kids in other countries. And yet they continue to make them for American kids, despite hundreds of thousands of moms this summer asking them to stop signing a petition. And Kellogg's responded, Sean, I don't know if you saw this, but their excuse was, well, your kids like it. I'm not joking. Wait, wait, wait. Just hold on. Just I, I don't want to overlook what you said. So there is a Kellogg's cereal of whatever in Europe that is available that doesn't have these dyes and whatever uh, preservatives. And then there's one they give to America because we'll allow it. Is that right? Exactly. So the okay, American mom. Not, how? I don't. How? Because how? we are the, buying the, it because we're willing to buy it. So until American moms wake up to this and are like, hey, my kid is uh, like acting like a hellion, um, not taking into consideration what am I feeding him, uh, continuing to give your money to Kellogg's, they will continue to make these cereals. But where's where? OK, the, the piece that I'm missing. And I just said it a second ago is where's the CDC, the Department of Health and Human Services, the FDA, the NIA, like what all of these studies and 
things that they regulate. They, they tell us that we can only have two drinks a day for, of alcohol. Where are they to say, hey, red dye number 52 is bad for you? Okay, so here's, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because everybody who is sitting on the boards like uh, the, the NIH, they are all bought and paid for by these companies. <laughs> Um, there is a woman. Okay, did you did you see? A few months ago, there was a special on 60 Minutes. It was all about Ozempic, right? Ozempic is is the is the new drug that sure. everybody is talking about. There is a woman who is a Harvard medical doctor, and she is the main doctor that they're asking about Ozempic. She's talking about the benefits in this 60 Minutes special. Turns out, she is receiving money from Ozempic. And yet she is allowed to go on TV talking about like, this is the, the next great thing for weight loss. Interestingly enough, this same woman, the same Harvard medical doctor is also on the board who is deciding our dietary guidelines in America. She is the one who is, is telling your kids what they should or shouldn't be eating at school. Now you tell me a woman who is accepting money from Ozempic and who gets to decide what your kids eat, do you think that it is in her best interest to add a bunch of processed food that is going to make your kids fat to the lunch menu or not? This By the way, don't you love this? We're going to give you stuff that'll make your kids fat. And then we will find a drug that you'll have to get on to get unfat to lose the weight. And then we'll tell you to keep eating the food. And then you take more drugs. I mean, it's like this vicious circle. Right. So this is this is the crony capitalism. This is the rigged system that we're dealing with. It should be a part of conservative talking points and ideology to point out this corruption and 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 put a stop to it. Uh, so this is highly concerning. So we want we want American citizens, right, as conservatives, we want American citizens to be able to make informed choices. But what my argument is, and I talk about this on my podcast, The Spillover, with all the interviews that I do with people that work in these industries that have a lot more experience in, in, in this subject matter than me, is is I am saying. You can't ask people to make informed decisions when the entire system is rigged. If when that's I no no bingo, that's it. <laughs> that's and and I that's why I joke that I find all this stuff. I listen to your podcast. I watch these Instagram clips. I was I literally was in my dermatologist's office the other day, and I said I got a silly thing to ask you. I know you probably like I I know you're gonna laugh because I saw this on Instagram, but you always tell me to put sunscreen on, and I'm like I'm I'm really good at it now because I've had enough zapped off me, and but now I'm reading that all these sunscreens have really bad chemicals in them. And she goes, yeah, it's true. I go, wait a second, what, what, how do you do that? You tell people to put sunscreen on so they don't get cancer. And then the sunscreen's full of stuff that's gonna give them other things. And she's like, yeah, but here's what you need to look for. And I go, how does this happen? And it's the same thing that you're talking about. Right, yeah. So uh, the sunscreen is interesting because we are incredibly vitamin D deficient as a country. We're not getting enough sun. We need sun. Sun is healthy. Uh, but we're just told the direction that we were given is avoid the sun entirely, never go outside, always be lathered in sunscreen. And then you saw last summer s multiple sunscreens being taken off the market because of cancer causing chemicals. So that's the irony is that people are not informed. We're given bunk science because these companies pay for the, the studies. The entire situation is completely corrupt. And really the, the president could make a, a decision tomorrow to help curb a lot of this. By the way, you know what happened in my story? My other doctor tells me you, you need some vitamin D because you're not getting it. And I'm like, this is insane. It's this vicious cycle of, we're gonna tell you to do something, we got a pill for this, everybody. I mean, it is unbelievable how the system works. And oh, by the way, we don't have time to get into this, but you would think to yourself, maybe some legislators, like i.e. Congress would wanna deal with it, but guess who they get all their PAC money from? Right, the pharma companies. <laughs> And the American it's Beverage so Association. Unreal. Guess guess who the uh, uh, American Heart Association is getting money from? Guess who the NAACP is getting money from? Coca Cola, Coca Cola, all of these soda companies. You know that that uh, the NAACP gets money from Coke. So the NAACP tells Congress we have to make sure that soda is on food stamps. This is this is a huge problem. This is a huge oh. problem. And by the way, by the way, Sean, it's a national security issue because seventy seven percent of young Americans today are not in physical shape to join the military. We are in an absolute or crisis. the Secret Service. 
You're, yes, <laughs> yes. So you've got DEI working against us and everybody's fat and sick and mentally ill. And nobody wants to hold the pharmaceutical companies or the food companies uh, accountable for that. And really, like I said, this really, I know that American moms are under a lot of pressure and they do the best they can, but we have to get American moms knowledgeable so that they can, they have the, the informed consent so that they can make different consumer choices right. at the grocery store. All right, Alex Clark, I, we're going to keep going on that. I mean, like, I, I want to have you back again. I, I've gotten more and more into this subject. I love watching your podcast, The Spillover, because you have these people on on different subjects that I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. I didn't know that. Or that's why, or you, and you also explain it too. So thank you for sharing all this with us today. Uh, I hope we can do it again soon. Thank you so much, Sean. It's always fun. You're listening to a special edition of The Sean Spicer Show, brought to you by GDR Labs. All right. I hope you loved that conversation with Alex. Uh, the great thing is that, as I said earlier in the show, there is a solution. Canola Dine, to me, has been an unbelievable game changer when it comes to pain and pain management and wellness. It is natural, right? No, it, it doesn't give you mental issues. You don't have to worry about driving or drinking or any of this kind of stuff. It's not like so many of these opioid things. There's no addictive qualities. You know, if you go into the doctor's office, they always warn you, well, we've got to be careful how many days you're on this. Canola Dine is all natural, non addictive, made here in the United States. The whole process. Nothing's coming from overseas. Nothing's coming from China. It is amazing. And like I said, they've got the drops, which I think are fantastic. But if you suffer from pain, like shoulder pain, or I've got knee pain as well, I rub this on. I used to have so much trouble sleeping at night. And I admit it, I've tried the pills. My doctor prescribed some stuff. I didn't like the feeling that I was on, though. And they kept warning me, be careful what you do with here, do that. It, it kind of freaked me out a little, to be honest with you. I like the advantage of a natural product. So I rubbed the canola dine bomb on at night. And it was like, where has it been this my whole life? Why is the government not telling me that this exists? Why isn't my doctor telling me they exist? But here's the beautiful thing. You now know. And if you go to trykono.com slash Sean, you can try as well. You have nothing to lose. You get a full 90 day money back guarantee. Trykono.com slash Sean. And you will thank me for this. Whether it's your shoulder, your hips, your knees, wherever you have muscle pain, try the, try the bomb. And I'm telling you the drops game changer. You will thank me for this. All right. I want to bring in Clint Winters. He is a medical scientist. Imagine that someone who actually understands science who licensed the product that I'm talking about to GDR labs in Georgia, where it is made soup to nuts and brought to all of us. All right, Clint, good to see you. I got to ask you, uh, I, I have been wondering why we don't as Americans get the exposure to these alternative remedies uh, and alternatives that that you have to hold that, that you can bring to the table. Why why don't we hear about them more? Yeah, so so really, Sean, the issue is the the deck is really stacked in favor of big pharma, and the American public really saw it during COVID. When, as you remember, there were so many valid natural solutions that were being discussed and even being offered by medical professionals in private. That if you want to make that public there was an intense amount of scrutiny. People lost their licenses, they were prosecuted. It was uh, it was crazy. And that leads into advertising. So Big Pharma controls a lot of media when it comes to advertising and natural supplement solutions are barred from really discussing what they can actually do because they're not considered a drug through the FDA system. So essentially what happens is pharma has a, has a monopoly because even if you have something with clinical research that you can show the American public, it's right here, here is everything that's been tested with it. You can't talk about that unless it's an officially a drug through the entire system. And if you don't have the billion dollars to do that, you can't talk about it. Which seems silly, right? I mean, I, I think, you know, it's funny when I got COVID, my doctor said to me, here are like the five things that you should take. Vitamin C, there's a thing called curacin. Um, I had a little list and I would show it to other people as they got diagnosed as well and say, hey, here's what my doctor told me. And he was like, the, you know, all natural remedies. And yet 
it was it was like a one off kind of like I felt like he was being sneaky. He's like, by the way, before you go, here's what you should know. Why why would it? I mean, it seems absolutely ridiculous that if you have something that can help people, that's pr that's not that's not illegal. It doesn't hurt them. I mean, taking copious amounts of vitamin C, unless you're you know probably taking a ton of it, isn't going <laughs> to hurt you. Like exactly. Why, why, but why? What is it? So it's, is it just big pharma? Is it the medical community? Is it the government? Is it all of them cahoots? Yeah, it's it's really I call it the the unholy alliance, unholy trinity, and you have big food, big pharma, and the FDA, and they kind of all work simultaneously for for the main the main purpose is profit, huge huge amounts of profit, and again it starts with a lot of the food that we eat. And when you look at the 2000 um, preservatives and other ingredients that are illegal in other parts of the world that we have here and, and, and we buy every day, then it moves into you get sick, you go and get a pill from your doctor because the doctors are highly regulated too. They have to be careful about what they say and don't say about things that aren't a drug. And of course, it's all being supervised by the FDA. So again, it's it's built for profit. That's the problem. Is the system? I call it perverted because it's not there to help. It's really there to make a profit. I mean, that's how it's geared to happen. So how? I mean, first of all, you mentioned the advertising aspect of this. Explain that to me for a while because I, I mean, when you watch television, it's literally yeah. like this drug, that drug, and by the way, it can cause eighteen different things and. But they advertise all the time that yeah. talk to your doctor about this. It'll cure that and cure that. W what are the advertising regulations for something that that doesn't go through the FDA but doesn't harm you if it's all yeah. natural? Well, one quick point I want to make is we're one of the only countries in the world that actually allows pharmaceutical advertising. When you think about it, a pharmaceutical is something that should be prescribed by your doctor. You should come in with an illness and they should say, hey, Based on my years of experience, we're going to prescribe you this drug instead of it being advertised where you're walking in the door saying, hey, doc, I need this. That sh really shouldn't be how it works, but it is how it works here. Now, to your question about supplements, it's all about what you can say. And, th and that's the that's the problem is, yes, you can go on and create an advertisement for a supplement, but you really can't say what it does. You can't say that it's clinically proven to do anything. You can't actually talk about the function that we would be considered a drug claim, even if you had the scientific research behind that. And that's the sad part. So what, for example, like you go out and you get 10 Harvard studies or something like that. Yeah. You can't, can you acknowledge them? Can you say Harvard looked at my drug and, or my cure and, and it says it's great. Can you, nope. can you, can you guide, can you guide people to it and say, go look at this link? Nope, because in the in the in the in the world of the FDA, if you did that, you are essentially making a drug claim. So you, you are now taking your natural supplement and calling it a drug. Therefore, you're making unsubstantiated drug claims. Even though it is clinically proven, you haven't gone through the drug approval process with the Food and Drug Administration. So that's so just this huge hurdle that companies can't get around. Okay, and and it's how 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 expensive is that hurdle? Let's let's talk brass tacks here. How yes. expensive? If you have a product and you say, and and also like the other thing I'm wondering is when I mean, you keep using the word natural. So mm -hmm. if, if it's a natural existing product, right? I.e., it 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 doesn't do any harm. What what is the what is the whereas like an off label use of a drug, right? Which we're all starting to get familiar with, yeah, can hurt you. Can literally hurt you. If you take an off-label natural supplement, can do any of these, could they potentially hurt you? Or is it, I mean, that's what I think is fascinating. As far as I know, I mean, for these things that I read about, it sounds like it, if it naturally exists, the odds of it doing any harm to you seem rather low or non-existent. You're totally right. And really for most natural solutions, natural compounds even, it, your body will, will get rid of what it doesn't need. So, right. so running the risk of any sort of overdose or using too much, because you're supporting a natural function, whereas a drug is mimicking or taking the place of a function your body does, which is why you become dependent on it, which is why you need it usually for a lifetime. Because your body's so smart, it realizes that, hey, I'm taking a drug. It's doing the heavy lifting for me. I no longer have to, to, to do what this process is. And that's where people get into a lot of trouble. And we're seeing it right now with Ozampic. 
I mean, that, yeah. it, that's, that's the biggest off-label use currently is that. That was that's a that's a diabetes drug that's being off-label used as a weight loss drug. It's not even approved for that. And it's being I, I used do, rapidly. I, I do love the ads though, because there, there's always <laughs> these shortages and they're like, yep. but when you read the ads, it goes, it may lose, you may lose some weight. And it's like, what do you think? People, I mean, they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly they, what they're doing. Yeah. And, yeah. and if a natural supplement did that, the owners would probably end up in jail. I mean, it's it's that lopsided. It's crazy. So how did a guy like you get into this? Like what 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 made you look at natural supplements and what the government was doing and what the hurdles were? Yeah. So for me, it was it's all based around canoladine. Um, I, I told you in a, in a previous conversation that by trade, I'm a medical scientist. But my my field of study was really medical devices. I wasn't even in nutraceuticals or pharmaceuticals. That wasn't my my path. And my mom got really sick at the end of 2015. She ended up having a terminal cancer diagnosis. And to the point where the only thing we could do as a family was, was keep her comfortable. And I'm sure a lot of people have been in that scenario where that's all you can do for your, fam your family member. And with all the treatments she was going through, because she was with chemo and radiation, the doctors prescribed her morphine. And I saw firsthand what a drug like that would do to somebody. And we lost our mom months before we actually lost her because she was no longer with us. She was a zombie. She was really dependent on this pill. And um, during that time, I took my, my scientific focus and started to try to figure out, is there something outside of morphine that would give her relief? And I went down the rabbit hole of CBD and THC and all that kind of stuff first. And then when I dug deeper is when this bombshell exploded in my face, which was canolidine, like a clinical, like just what we're talking about right here, clinical documentation of a natural alkaloid that had opioid like relief qualities without side effects, without addiction. And nobody was talking about it. Okay. So, so I, I don't, okay. So you, you find canolidine. Why? I mean, I, 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 you're a smart guy. Like, let's yes. just, okay. <laughs> okay. But, but That's why, but, but, but why, why isn't big farmer going, Hey, we found what Clint found. So here's the thing they have, but what? they're trying to wait, hold on. They, they knew this and what, and they didn't do it. I mean, to me, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. And that's, and that's that. And, and let's, let's think about the time period too. This is, you know, 2016, 17. That's when we're entering, you know, the, the real, real gloomy days of our opioid epidemic, the start of it when things got really bad with Oxycontin and we were looking for solutions, right? Well, the solution was there. They knew about it. And instead of talking about it, they were, they were, they filed a, a patent to synthesize it, to turn it into a new drug in the future. So they knew what they had. They knew what canoladine is. They knew what could help. And their focus was how do we make money from this? Even though people are literally dying on the streets with opioids, this is a way to fight that 100%. It already has, but yet they did nothing. Well, okay, it, so why, I mean, I, I don't get it. Why, like, is it because they couldn't make enough money or they were making more with, with Oxycontin? Like, be, what, what is it? I don't get that. Yeah, because it, the, the, here's the thing about drug companies is they'll take, mo most drugs, most pharmaceuticals originate from a natural compound, okay. right? It starts natural, then they synthesize it, then they usually change the molecular structure, and then they patent it. And once they have patent rights, now they can protect it and make billions and billions and billions of dollars until it finally goes into generic use down the road. So to them, they, they're willing to let people suffer while they go through that synthesis process to then eventually make a bunch of money. So even though this is something that they could have, like I did, figure out how to extract, roll it out naturally, they're not going to do that because that's not their profit model. They make it, they'll make a lot more money from it later on down the road. So literally people, and here's the thing that I find fascinating about what you just said. It's one thing to put that off in terms of the pain and suffering, but you alluded to this. We're going through this massive opioid addiction problem yeah. and they could help solve that. And yet they're choosing not to. They are. And a lot of these big what? pharmaceutical companies also, they also own nutraceutical companies. So they could have absolutely rolled this out quickly to the masses. I mean, the solution was, was there that the science is there. It's been studied now for 14 years. It's, it's the only known compound 
to to enhance your body's natural endorphin flow, which is how we naturally fight pain. It's there. The research is there. It's helping people right now as people are watching this. It's it's working on thousands and thousands of people. It it, it could have made a huge impact back then, but it was just well, it can make a huge impact now. I mean, yeah. I, I think about look, I I just think about all of the times when I've gone in to see a doctor, right? I, I mean, I people who watch the show, my hips, my knees, my shoulder. I mean, I, I'm like a medical nightmare. Uh, and yet every time I go in, the first thing they do is say, all right, we're prescribing you this. And, you know, and then it's okay. And then we'll figure out how to make it go away, i.e. physical therapy or some kind of surgery. But it's like the, the default is here's the drug we're going to give you to mask the pain. Exactly. Exactly. So walk me through, you say you discovered then what walk us through the evolution. You, you find this yes. and then what? So once I found it and I saw the, the initial reports that I read, which was done with, from a uh, um, Scripps research down in Jupiter, Florida, they compare, and this isn't marketing. This is their medical research. They compared it to morphine without side effects or without risk of addiction. That was in, in 2011. So then I followed the evolution of science as it was happening with canolodyne. And what later on was figured out is that canolodyne attaches itself to a pain receptor that we now know as a scavenger receptor. So we, we used to think there was four receptors in the brain. Those are the four that things like Oxycontin, morphine, these different painkillers will attach to and give you relief. Well, what they figured out was you have a fifth one that's robbing your body of your natural endorphins. Now your endorphin flow is essentially your internal painkiller. In fact, the name itself, endorphin, means internal morphine. That's how they came up with the name. It's the way our body naturally kills pain. The problem is, as we age, our endorphin flow gets more and more robbed by the scavenger receptor. So if we're eight years old and we fall off a bike, we can get right back up and we're fine the next day at 18 at 28 38 48 and keep going as you get older it gets worse and worse where if you have an injury at 50 you might never recover from it right you're always you're always in <laughs> is that a hint clint is that a hint <laughs> i need to be more careful hey, not, no hints just saying <laughs> that that's the reality for, for most americans i mean i'm 42 years old i, fa I face the same thing and it, it it as so what this does is allows that endorphin flow to get back to normal. So within seven days, canolodyne totally takes, you know, covers the scavenger receptor and all of a sudden your four main receptors are now receiving endorphins like they're supposed to. So it's the first ever pain relief supplement, essentially something you take on a daily basis to enhance your endorphin flow. And when you do that, it's like dialing down, uh, you know, dialing down a stove you know, dialing down your pain dial, all of a sudden it goes from something that's limiting you every day. to you just, you feel better because your body's dealing with it and you're not inebriated. Do doctors, do doctors know about this? Like, why wouldn't my doctor who's, I mean, it's funny. I, I know people who go through surgery and these days, right? You probably know some of them too. You go through a surgery and they're very cognizant of how long they keep you on like an oxycodone or something. Cause yes. they're okay. Why wouldn't they just say now, Hey, we know about canola diet. What, why so, don't you, what, why, yeah. where are doctors in this? Are they saying, hey, we now know about this product that, that Clint has brought forward? So luckily the ones that, that now do know about it are, are gathering around it and starting to tell their patients about it. But again, Sean, remember they have to be very careful because their licensing is all based around pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so so they're, tr they're truly afraid of losing their licensing by telling people natural solutions that exist because they're kind of inside the system of pharmaceuticals. So if you're not, I mean, look, let, I, I just, can we bottom line this? If you're not listening to this right now, the odds of you, or, or I know you, you probably have many other outlets that, you know, you talk to that I came across you, but like, you're not going to find out about this by talking to your doctor and saying, God, I'm a little concerned about addiction issues or I, I mean, God bless. I'm sorry about your, your mom and your situation. Thank you. But 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 you know what I'm saying with with respect to drugs, and I think that the, unfortunately you you saw it firsthand. The the trade off sometimes is yes, the pain went away, but now you're out of it, right? You know that's yes. why they always tell you you can't drive. It sounds like correct me if I'm wrong, but when you take canolodyne, it's not affecting your mental state. No, no. In fact, it, it actually increases your well being. So if you've ever had like a runner's high, 
that's that's like when you when you go out and you do activity, all of a sudden you feel like you catch a second wind, or you know, I call it the Superman effect. All of a sudden you feel great. That's that's in your endorphin flow. So you don't feel high or you don't feel weird or neat. you feel focused and, and you know a, a great sense of well being. That's what it does for you. I, I okay. I just the thing that's so fascinating to me is that we have an answer out there. It's the opposite of what's going on. And I said this a lot a while ago, but my wife gets a kick out of the fact that I'm like getting all my medical advice now from Instagram. But I feel like on social media, it'll say these dyes, you mentioned this a moment ago, these dyes are banned in other countries. These preservatives aren't allowed. Uh, all of this EMF radiation coming out of your Bluetooth stuff is causing, and yet no one from the government is, is either helping you understand that I mean, this is the point that I make to her is that, okay, I may not get this, but I'm not getting it from my doctor and the FDA and the CDC and all these people. No one from the government, the NIH, is telling me the bad thing. It's it's until I stumble upon Clint and hear yeah. about canolidine. You're totally right. And luckily, I've been able to find outlets like yourself that you know are, are reporting news, newsworthy things that, that need to be discussed because most of your mainstream media, they're still controlled heavily by pharma. So it's it's my opinion that this should have been on every major news network all across the country when this was discovered. I mean, I, I, well, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I just it's sort of like this gets back to so many things that are happening in the government these days, which is why isn't somebody. OK, so let's be clear. You aren't doesn't have a mental effect, right? You could still drive a car or do whatever. Yeah. It's probably a heck of a lot cheaper. It doesn't have addictive qualities to it. I mean, like it's like what is going on? that is some is is causing people not to highlight this and you do wonder about the collusion that's happening between all the aforementioned you know big pharma government big food yep yeah and, and really what i've what i've come to believe is it's an entire system so what happens is when you look at the food and drug administration you look at the people that work inside of that organization a lot of them will retire onto major pharma boards making a ton of money I so watched this. Um, I watched this op-ed. I mean, excuse me. This documentary, or it's like a fake documentary about the drug industry the other day. And I was going to ask you about that. These guys all get like they leave the CDC or the NIH, or whatever. And where do they go? To pharma. <laughs> That's where they go. <laughs> oh. I mean, it happened, it happened in front of us with with OxyContin. Yes. When the person, the person that approved that label, that was the craziest approval ever, basically, you know, saying it's not addictive. He went and he took a a, a board seat. With with uh, with Purdue <laughs> making a half a million. You can't make this up. You, you cannot can't. make this up. That's exactly uh, how it works. <laughs> Crazy. All right, Clint, uh, tell me about uh, your product because I've tried it. Uh, yeah. I actually tried both, and I, I did the 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 drops right. But yes. this, I have, and again, if some people know from some of the other products that I talk about on the show, the shoes that I wear, etc. But I my knees have been killing me. I've been going to physical therapy. I took this rub that you guys have. Yeah, but, and I'll, honest to God, it usually hurts me when I go to sleep. The muscle pains are unbelievable. And previously, my doctor had prescribed something to me, and I thought, "All right, I want to try the rub on the knee." I slept like a baby. <laughs> like, I mean, it was like I couldn't believe. Normally, I wake up and it aches, and I've got to stretch it out or whatever. Uh, I, I so so walk me through what you guys offer to 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 relieve the pain. Yeah. So, so basically what I did was once, once I got through my research on canola how to extract it, how to create it, I went out and sought the, the best lab to produce it. So that was my, my, cause I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm not a, a marketer, right? So my thing was to find a brand that, that I could trust to, to roll this out to the public. And what I found was GDR labs. So GDR okay. labs uh, is located right where, where I am in Atlanta. It's about 15 minutes from my house. And what I love about their production facility is it's 100% American made. And that's something that's super, super important to me because I can walk through, I can see that they're following the, the extraction procedures. It's all done here from A to Z. The ingredients are done here. The testing is done here. And it's shipped out right from that facility because there's so many facilities, especially ones I've toured that have multiple locations or overseas. You don't really know about the quality assurances. Right. And this is a, a product that is, is drug-free certified, it's GMP certified, it's given to professional athletes because of that ability. Uh, it's, 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 it's second second to none as far as its production ability. So GDR is who produces it. I, I love the fact that it's all in the United States because I, I got a kick out of COVID. They send us a disease and then we, or virus, 
And then we end up buying more and more of our pharmaceutical and our PPE from the same people. So, I mean, I'm like, what are we doing that are we're relying on them? And so the idea that that GDR Labs is here in Georgia, it's all made in the United States, I think means a lot. I know that you guys have a, a special offer for us because we're, we're talking about this today. Why don't you yeah. walk us through what we can do? Sure. So GDR set up a private link and it's tricono.com slash Sean. And what they did oh, nice. is yes, <laughs> easy to remember. And um, they slashed the price by $91. So okay. it's essentially a dollar a day, $29 per bottle for a very limited time. And the reason for that is we just, we want to get the word out. We want people to try it. I mean, that's less but, than the copay for probably a Exactly. There's no reason not to try it. There's a 90 day money back guarantee with it. And all I ask is we're really trying hard to get the word about canoladine out. GDR Labs is the only company in the world that makes it. You can't find canoladine anywhere else. They, they are exclusively the one that makes it. And we just want people talking about it. So right. if you're in pain or know someone who is in pain, please just, just tell them about what's out there because you're right, there are options. And as we start talking about more as, as Americans, we're gonna to start to spread the word of things like this that exist. Well, I can tell you right now, as someone who's used it on my, I mean, I could not believe, I thought maybe I'll get some relief. I've tried some CBD products in the past and some prescription drugs. This was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, <laughs> boom. And and I mean, to the point where I literally had gone to the doctor saying, I can't sleep at night because of the pain in the knee. I have a torn meniscus. And, so, and he was like, of course, you got to go to PT. Here's a drug to get you through the night. Yeah. I don't like the prescription drugs for a lot of reasons. So when I tried this and I slept through the night, I was like, oh my goodness. Um, so again, the, the link is tricona.com slash Sean, right? Yes. And, and one, one thing I want to add to is make sure that, uh, when you use it, it's a daily use product. So don't take it just when you're in pain. You can use the rub when you're in pain, but for the sublingual, <laughs> use it every single day, like use it, just take it. Like you take vitamin C. It's a supplement, just like anything else It builds in your system and just, you know, it keeps your endorphin flow firing. Well, that's the other thing is that I got to make sure I keep taking it when it goes away because I've noticed that it's subsided and I've got to keep taking the drops every day yes. as well as the rub. So I take the rub yep. at night, the, the the drops in the morning, and I'll, I'll be good to go. Yep. Uh, Clint, Perfect this has been awesome. I, I I love the the light that you have shed on this problem and the alternative that you've given us to that our government and big pharma is not sharing with us. So thank you for doing that. You got it. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You bet, guys. All right. Well, we're going to be back with another episode of the Sean Spicer Show. That means that you need to subscribe. Continue to hit that button on YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or iHeart, wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you back tomorrow with another episode of the Sean Spicer Show. Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get more.